CIL 650 presents It's Your Money, an up-close and personal look at your finances. Here's your host, Fred Snyder. Up in the morning and out to school. Okay, back to school. The teacher is teaching the gold. And we are back. And our mission today is to teach you what you need to know to make better financial decisions. That's what this show is all about. We're live here for the next two hours, flying solo today, so your comments are welcome. Your participation is expected. And when you call the show, you get some free stuff. You get the Napoleon Hill Think and Grow Rich workbook. Fabulous workbook, which will help you establish your goals and requires your participation. We will give you the wherewithal so that you can get the book at absolutely no cost. All you got to do is make a phone call. And one of the things I want to talk about today is your financial plan. And essentially, most of the people I talk to, and I talk to an awful lot of people in a year, in a month, even in a week. So I see financial profiles. And what people have most in common is, if they have a financial plan, they don't understand it. Number one, they may have a financial plan, but they don't understand it. Some don't even have a plan at all. And some people have what they believe to be a very sophisticated plan. And these people themselves don't understand the plan. It's too complicated. So if you're listening to this show right now and you have a financial plan, you want to understand it better, give Frida a call, make an appointment, come and see me. I'll review it with you. I'll give you a second opinion on it. Maybe you need a new financial plan. Maybe you need one that you can understand. A financial plan is all about your financial goals and how to achieve them. So visualize this. You don't have a plan, you're going to end up broke. Visualize yourself broke. What does that look like? What does it feel like? When you talk to somebody that's broke, what's their persona? Do they come across well? I don't think so. On the other hand, visualize yourself being rich. What does that look like? How does it feel? I've heard people say that they don't like money, and I say they lie about other things. Okay? Because I've been rich and I've been poor, and I'd much rather be rich. Wealth gives you freedom, the freedom to do what you want to do. You say you want to help other people? Well, who's in a better position to help other people? Somebody who's fabulously wealthy or somebody who's broke? How do you tutor people who don't know how to achieve wealth? How do you teach them how to achieve wealth if you're not wealthy yourself? And what is wealth all about? What does it mean? Is wealth about knowledge? Health, money, social relationships, family relationships, your job or your career. Wealth is all about the things that you have. But remember this, that having is the result of being. Before you can have, before you're entitled to have, you must become. And that's called personal growth and development. So a great deal of your life, your learning experiences should be about learning how to grow. Body, mind, and soul, socially, family life, and your financial life as well. Six areas that you must set goals in. Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich, says that anything you can vividly imagine, think about what I just said, vividly imagine, ardently desire, believe you can achieve, and enthusiastically act upon, will inevitably come to pass. Will inevitably come to pass, almost automatically. But it starts with having crystal clear, extremely well-defined goals. It isn't enough to say, I want to be rich. What does rich mean to you? Like I said earlier, what does it feel like? How do you feel when you're rich? Can you visualize yourself being rich? Can you visualize yourself living in the house that you really want to live in rather than the, than the one you're prepared to settle for? Driving the car that you really want to drive rather than the one you're prepared to settle for? Having the boat that you really want rather than the one you're prepared to settle for? Think, think, think about what I just said. Because your hopes, your plans, your dreams, your ambitions, everything that life is all about depend upon the money you need to be able to carry them out. And without a financial plan, you're planning to fail. 
Having a plan is planning to succeed. So what does that plan look like? We've talked about that many, many, many times on this show. You want to get a financial plan, no cost, no obligation. All you have to do is give Frida a call. Call Frida at 604-737-3512. You want to log on more information? You can log on www.fredsnydergroup.com. You can call us here on this show live, 604-280-0650. Long distance, 1-877-280-0650. And there are those who tell me, I'd love to call your show, but I'm shy. I'm reluctant to talk on the air. Well, just for those people, we have Frida down at the office right now. She works weekends just to take your calls. She's down there. You can get her at 604-737-3512. Long distance, 1-800-661-1495. If you just tuned in, I'm certified financial planner Fred Snyder, also a registered financial planner representing Scotia McLeod. And it's my mission to teach you what you need to know to make better financial decisions because the quantity and quality in particular of the financial decisions that you make throughout your lifetime will ultimately decide your success from a financial point of view and your success indeed in any other areas of your life. Again, how do you expect to get there wherever it is you want to go if you don't have a crystal clear goal? So once again, I want you to think about your, the various areas of your life your physical needs. Are you overweight? Are you enjoying life because of that? Is your health good? Do you have a broad range of friends, social connections, social acceptance into the most exclusive club in town and so on? So socially, are you sound? Do you have goals, social goals? Family life, how about the time you spend with your, your spouse, your wife, your children? your grandchildren, all the people that are related to you, your family life. What kind of relationships do you have there? What about your spiritual life? What or who is your higher being? Who do you pray to? Who is it you ask for help to achieve the things that you want in life? You need to think about body, mind, and soul social life, family life, and indeed financial life. But money isn't everything. But it's almost as, as important as breathing. Think about that for a minute, if you will. So like, like I once said, I've been rich and I've been poor and I'd rather be rich. And those who say they don't care about money would lie about many other things. Okay, so think about money. The more you have, the better you feel. It's fuzzy and warm. It's not cold, hard cash. It's nice to have it. And the only reason you're going to have it is to have a well-founded, written financial plan. So again, there are people who are concerned about the markets these days. The markets have been very volatile. And again, I've had this here little thing for years and years and years. And it was a piece that I had about 35 years ago when I first got into this business. And it said, don't pay too much attention to the media. Okay, so what you read in the news or what you hear on the news or see on television, don't pay too much attention. It's a gloomy moment in the history of our country. Few would deny that today. The domestic economic situation is in chaos. True. Canadian dollar, 75 cents. Oil prices falling through the floor. 30% 30% of the Canadian economy is oil, and it's in ter- the oil industry is in terrible shape in Canada right now. Our dollar is weak throughout the world, indeed. Think about that one for a minute. It's true, isn't it? Prices are so high as to be utterly impossible. Here I heard in the news yesterday, Vancouver, the highest standard of living in the world. More expensive to live in Vancouver than any place. Prices are so high as to be utterly impossible. True or false? True. The political cauldron sees and bubbles with uncertainty. Here we have Donald Trump leading the back. 
Why, you know, is it possible that this man could become president of the United States? I'm starting to wonder. Okay. Russia hangs as usual like a cloud, dark and silent upon the horizon. True or false? True. It's a solemn moment of our troubles. No man can see the end. Now, you could easily have read that in yesterday's paper. The fact is, that was in Harper's Magazine in 1847. So the question is, what is new? Nothing is new. The fundamentals are still the same. When you invest, you, got to, you, you need to buy low and sell high. People do just the opposite. When the markets are high, they buy, and when the markets go down, they sell, and that's the sure recipe for disaster. Okay? You can't do that. You have to believe in an approach to investing. You need an investment plan that you can believe in. And the investment plan says that in the long run, certain investments perform better than others. In the long run, you can't invest your money in a, five, in a 2% GIC and after taxes and inflation come out ahead. Because if you get 2%, which is about the maximum, you can take almost half that off for taxes and take triple that off for inflation and you got a negative return of about 2%. It doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen, listeners out there. It doesn't work, and it won't work, and it never will. So the alternative is to buy investments where you're an owner, not a loner. You don't lend your money to people at fixed interest rates and expect to get ahead. You have to own things that appreciate in value, like real estate, like stocks, like investment funds. Get yourself some kind of a proper investment plan. Embed that investment plan inside of a proper financial plan. When I talk about the three P's, I talk about the fact that there are three P's. The first P stands for the plan. Now remember that, the plan. Spell that out in capital letters because that's, 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 home, that, that's home plate, the plan. What does the plan look like? Inside the plan, you've got several mini plans. You have an estate plan. You have a cash management plan. You have a retirement plan. You have a capital creation plan. You have all these mini plans inside of it, a debt reduction plan. So you need a plan, and you need plans inside the plan. And then you need ongoing planning, which means you need a coach to help you make the plan work. That's somebody like myself, a certified registered financial planner representing a large, solid financial institution like Scotia McLeod. So you need somebody like myself to help tutor you and help coach you to make the plan work. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, listeners out there, you need the thing that everybody thinks is everything, and that's the best products inside the plan. Lots of people have products, but they don't have a plan to put them inside of. They don't have a way to wrap up those products. They have what I call uh, naked products without a plan. Okay, so you need to get the best products inside your plan, which means some of the products that you need is, for example, life insurance, disability insurance, long-term care insurance, various forms of insurance to protect yourself against disaster, to protect yourself against the unexpected. So you need insurance inside your plan, some form of insurance. And you need a coach to help you get the least expensive form of insurance. Most people pay too much for the wrong kind of life insurance. Too much for the wrong kind. Okay? I see this time and time and time and time again. They have five-year renewable term as an example. Five-year renewable term means the cost of the insurance goes up, increases every five years. Not in a straight line, exponentially. In other words, it accelerates. The increase accelerates. And usually runs out at age 75, which means you can't renew it beyond age 75. So if you live to age 75, or for to, to have a payout, you got to die before you're 75. If you live longer than 75, you have no life insurance after that point. That type of policy is good for those who can't afford the best kind, but that is not the right kind of insurance generally to have. Okay. So insurance products are very, very important. And you can only buy insurance products from a financial advisor who's licensed to handle insurance. 
So make sure that the advisor you're dealing with is properly licensed to be able to offer insurance products. And then after you buy the insurance products, you need investment products, like stocks. Maybe blue chip stocks, maybe small cap company stocks. There's various kinds of stocks that you can invest in. But when you buy stocks, you have to buy low and sell high. In other words, you have to trade. And trading stocks is a tough decision. It's going up. Should I wait and let it go higher, or should I take my profits now and run? It went down. Should I sell it before it goes lower? You got two decisions to make. If I sell it before it goes lower, now I got to make another decision when to buy to get back in. That's where the risk is when you buy individual securities. I would rather pool my securities and hire an investment manager to manage that pool of securities on my behalf. Somebody who's at looking at those securities, that pool of securities on a full-time basis. Or you can buy real estate. Now, how much money does it take to buy 15 houses if you want a real estate portfolio? You got to be pretty rich just to start. Okay. So real estate becomes difficult for most people to buy as an investment, not, as, not the house you live in. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an investment portfolio of real estate. It's hard because it takes too much money to get a broadly diversified portfolio. Again, you can buy real estate investment funds where the real estate is pooled and you hire a professional manager to manage that pool. But how do you select these products? You need somebody like myself that has the wherewithal that can sit down with, sit down with you and explain why we pick certain investments and why this investment is better than that investment when you compare them side by side. So you may have a portfolio of 10 investment funds or 15 or 20 investment funds or, or maybe only five. They may all be with one company. I see this all the time where somebody comes into the office and they got 10 funds and they're all with one of the major banks, all with CIBC or RBC or somebody like that, all with one organization. I will tell you from experience right now that you cannot find the best investments with one company. You have to be independent, like myself, to be able to offer the products of various different companies to be able to find the best products. You won't find them all with the one corporation. So if you're out there and you're wondering about your investment portfolio, do you have the best investments inside your portfolio and how do you make sure of that? So what have we talked about so far in summary? We have said that you need a financial plan. Inside that financial plan, you need the best investment products. You need a financial coach to help you make the decisions that you have to make to make that plan work. Pure and simple, three Ps. The first P stands for plan. Second P stands for planning. The last P stands for the best products. How do you get the best products? You have to deal with an independent financial advisor, such as myself, that can go to the market for products and pick the best products for you. And I will guarantee you that most of the people listening to this show right now, the vast majority of people listening to this show right now, do not have a financial plan, or if they have one, they don't understand the plan they have. It's time to fix that, ladies and gentlemen and listeners out there. How do you fix it? You make a phone call. The person to call is Frida. Frida's down at the office right now. It's area code 604-737-3512. Long distance 1-800-661-1495. It's my job. It's my mission. My raison d'etre to teach you what you need to know to make better financial decisions so that you can keep more of the money you earn. I give these statistics out practically every show that I do, and I'm going to do it again at the risk of sounding like a broken record. But I want you to understand that if you take 100 people who start out equal today at the age of 25, by the time they end up at 65, one is wealthy, only one out of 100. That's a 1% chance. Four are well-to-do. What does well-to-do mean? Well, different things to different people. So maybe 5% achieve some kind of financial success. But that means 95% don't. Five are still working. 
Some of those people are still working. They just don't want to retire. They may be okay, too. They just like working. I had a lawyer one time. He told me he retired. Didn't like it. So he went back to work. That's okay. He could retire if he wanted to. That's the key statement. And then after, after all is said and done, when that happens, you're in a situation. I, I got my cell phone going here. I don't know who in the world is trying to call me when I'm doing a radio show. But uh, if you hear that buzzing in the background, it's an unknown caller. They don't even identify themselves. <laughs> not, a, not what I call a plan because you're not going to get me calling this radio show and then not even identifying yourself. I don't answer those calls. But th the bottom line is that you need to know. You need to be able to define where you're at. Peter Drucker, the Dean of Modern Business Management, often said, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So if you can't measure your money, then you can't manage it. So what does measuring your money need? Well, how many people listening to this show right now know what their net worth is? Net worth means you, you add up all your assets, you deduct from your assets all your liabilities, and you get a number. That's called your net worth. The spread between assets and liabilities is called net worth. Some people might, have, might come up with a million dollars, two million, ten million, whatever. Others will come up with a negative figure. Guess what? They're bankrupt. So if the, if the difference between assets and liabilities is a negative number, you're bankrupt, technically. Okay? And then you have what they call cash flow. Is your cash flow positive, negative, or neutral? Cash flow is the difference between your, your income and your expenses. Deduct your expenses or your cash distributions from your income, and if that number is a positive number, you have a surplus, positive cash flow. If it's equal, if you're broke on payday, then that's neutral. If it's a negative figure, then you're going into debt. And going into debt is something that we're all pretty familiar with because almost all the governments of the world right now are doing that. They're spending more money than they're collecting in taxes. The U.S. right now is running a debt load of approximately $18 trillion. And that's only current. If you add to that the unfunded future liabilities, it's over $50 trillion. And some people say, my God, that's awful. Well, that translates into approximately, and I don't know the exact figure, but it's approximately the same per citizen in the United States as it is in Canada. And the Canadian federal debt is over $600 billion. If you add the province to that, it's well over a trillion and increasing. So every time the government runs a deficit, it's called fiscal spending, that's their budget. Every time the government runs a deficit, they have to borrow the money. Who do they borrow it from? Well, sometimes they borrow from their own citizens and they sell Canada savings bonds and things like that. But sometimes they borrow from other countries. For example, the amount of money that the United States owes China right now of the money of the 18 trillion, it's, it's about a trillion, I think, and roughly 1.5 trillion they owe China. The interest on that money is enough to finance the Chinese military. I want you to think about how ridiculously incredible stu stupid that is. And no wonder Trump has a chance because he's saying he's going to fix it. And people are starting to believe him. Okay? we got to fix this stuff because if we don't, we're in trouble big time. So again, remember, don't pay too much attention to the media. And it's not new. The things that we're talking about have been this way for a long, long time. Listen to Fried Zakaria this morning on CNN, and he's basically saying that this uh, fear of ISIS, etc., is going to be around for a long time. And the money, the money that governments spend to protect our citizens from these people is unbelievable. And that's exactly what they want. They want to bankrupt us. It's like the Arabs when they keep the taps open and flood the market with oil right now to drive the price down. They want to drive the producers of oil right out of, right out of, the, uh, right out of the market. For example, Canada with the tar sands, it costs $67 to get a barrel of oil out of the ground, and they can only sell it for 42 Why in the world would anybody 
produce something that costs 67 when they can only get $42 for it. So guess what? We lay an awful lot of people off. They're in the oil industry. Why? How can the Arabs do this? It only costs them $17 to get a barrel of oil out of the ground. And they can sell it for 42 So they're making a ton of money and driving all the competition out. we got to fix that. I make a small contribution to that because I drive an electric car. So does my wife. I said, let's stick it to the Arabs. Okay. I'm not going to buy their bloody oil if I can avoid it. That's what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about your future economic security. And your future economic security depends upon the people who govern us. So let me sum it all up by saying one thing. Pick your politicians wisely. Pick politicians that believe in fiscal responsibility. Pick politicians that don't spend more than they collect in taxes. Or if you demand more from the government, then expect an increase in taxes. Don't expect them to finance it with debt. You can't borrow your way out of trouble. You have to work your way out of trouble. Increase the size of the pie, increase productivity, increase taxes because you made the pie bigger, all these things. But you can't fix problems with debt. And that applies to governments of, at all levels. And I'm talking federal, provincial, municipal, uh, and I'm also talking to individuals and corporations as well. When it comes to borrowing money, you can't borrow your way out of trouble. You must make sure that your income exceeds your distributions. Make sure you have positive cash flow so that you have some money to save and invest, some money to put away for the future. That's what we're talking about. So get on the line, give us a call. The number to call is area code 604-280-0650, long distance 877-280-0650. You can log on www.cil650.com. And for those who are shy, and many are, you can talk to Frida. Frida's down at the office. She just loves talking to you. Give Frida a call at area code 604-737-3512. Long distance, 1-800-661-1495. Remember this. I'm reaching out to you right now. I'm talking about what does your financial plan look like. But more importantly, if you have one, and the chances are you don't, but if you have one, do you understand it? It struck me on the way out here when I was driving here this morning that I talk to people all the time who have financial plans and they haven't got a clue how they work. They got a 50 or 60 page financial plan and they don't understand a darn thing that it says. Okay? So it's not only important to have a plan, it's just as important to understand it. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So give us a call. You got everything to gain, nothing to lose. You get this fabulous, fabulous workbook, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. All you got to do is fill in the blanks, the squares, it's a $24 value. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, that's what each of those books costs me. And fortunately, I don't have a flood of calls because I go broke distributing them. But everybody who calls the show gets one. And I want you to have one. And maybe you're a client of mine already and you want to review your existing financial plan. You want to review your investment portfolio, or maybe you're considering becoming a client right now and you want to do the same thing. All you have to do is make a connection with Frida. Frida's down at the office right now at area code 604-737-3512, long distance 800-661-1495. If you just tuned in, I'm certified financial planner Fred Snyder, also registered financial planner representing Scotia McLeod. We're talking about your money and how to keep it. Your money and how to keep it. How to keep it is the most important part of that. And most of us fail to achieve that particular objective. We earn a small fortune, but we don't keep it. So once again, 100 people starting out equal today at the age of 25. By the time they end up at 65, one is wealthy, four are well-to-do, five are still working, 36 are dead, and the remaining 54 are dead, broke, dependent, on family and state. Ask yourself this question. How long have I worked? 10, 15, 20 years? One or two years maybe? How long have I worked? 
How much money have I made so far during my working career? How much have I made? Do the calculation and then ask yourself the question, how much did I keep? How much of that do I have left today? And the third question is, am I happy with the answer? And the chances are you're not. And you're never going to be happy with the answer unless you make a phone call and get started on the route to financial success. So get your future financial situation going today by making a phone call. Let's talk to Arthur from Vancouver. Arthur, welcome to the program. Hi, Fred. Hi, Arthur. How you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Recognize your voice. Yes, I I just wanted to call and say uh, thank you for uh, 10 or so more years of uh, uh, le- no worry uh, financial planning. Well, Arthur, I appreciate that. How's the real and, estate uh, business? Our real estate business is fine. Uh, we uh, like to work hard for our clients. Uh, we're not interested in doing great volumes, but we want to uh, have uh, happy clients. Well, I, I really appreciate your phone call, Arthur, and I appreciate your testimonial. That was excellent. Yeah. Any questions uh, while I have you on the line? Well, I, uh, I, I guess I, I just like to know... Uh, how is, you've been saying right along, but uh, how, what direction should we be going with our finances? Well, you should be going north, not south. Uh, of course. E- e- east or west is neutral. South yes. is going broke safely yes. or carefully or whatever you want to call it. North is yes. the right direction. It means that you should be increasing your net worth. You should know what your net worth is, whatever that number is, and that should be increasing by at least... Uh, we'll say 5% per year, minimum. Well, I'm, I'm glad that that's happening with my money, uh, but uh, I have to balance the uh, income with the expenses, that's all. Well, that's the trick, and that's the trick for everybody because that's where it all starts. Even, yeah. even, even if you have a positive net worth, if your cash flow is negative, you have to finance the deficit with either your assets or by debt. You have, you have to sell something to, to pay for the shortfall or you have to borrow the money to pay for the shortfall. So Absolutely. really, financial planning starts with defining your expenditures, then def- matching your income against that. And if you have a deficit, you got to fix the deficit somehow. Well, thank you so much for your help. Arthur, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your call. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. You too. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Arthur's line is now open if you just joined us, and I have to go to the break. So I'm going to do that, and when I come back, we're going to take more of your calls. We're going to continue to talk about financial planning. And the fact, really, I'm trying to keep the focus today on one thing. I'm going to call it understanding your financial plan if you have one and getting one if you don't have one. That's what we're talking about. Don't go away. Fred Snyder. Statistically, if you take 100 people who start out equal today at the age of 25, by the time they end up at 65, one is wealthy, four are well-to-do, five are still working, 36 are dead, and the rest are dead broke, dependent on family and state. That's over half the people who start out equal at age 25, by the time they end up at 65, are dependent on family and state. And that's a sad state of statistics. Fred Snyder. You need a blueprint that says, this is where you're at right now, and this is where you want to go, and this is the way to get there. Fred Snyder. So isn't it time to get that good, warm, fuzzy feeling because you know exactly where you're at? You know that your investments are going to work for you? You know that you have the right investments inside your financial plan? You're confident about the future because you've covered all the bases? You know exactly how much life insurance you need, and you have the right amount of insurance. You have a financial advisor such as myself or somebody that's equally competent that you can check with to determine whether you're on track or not. And whether you're on track or not, you know, I like to use the analogy, do you have a GPS? Fred's got your GPS. Talk to Fred. Listen to Fred. Fred Snyder. Sunday mornings, 9 to 11 on CIL 650. This is CISL Vancouver. Smooth and easy. This is It's Your Money on CL650. Here once again is Fred Snyder. Okay, we're back. 
Remind you once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Taking your calls, giving stuff away. Again, everybody who calls the show, there's just one good solid reason for calling this show. You get a $24 book. It really costs $24. It's called the Think and Grow Rich Workbook. Now, you want the book that goes along with it, Think and Grow Rich, that's a free download. It doesn't cost you a nickel. So if you call the show, I can show you how to get the book. You will get the workbook at absolutely no cost. You just got to make a phone call. That's your reward for participating in the show. We want you to do that. You are part of this show, the listeners who listen to this show. And I'm talking about the fact that most people don't have a financial plan, and even if they do, they don't understand it. So again, you may not have a financial plan. You may be just getting started, and you want to get on the right route, the right path. Give us a call. Maybe you have a financial plan. You've accumulated 100000 200000 or 300000 in assets. You have a plan, but you want to do better. You want to understand the plan that you have, if you have one. And thirdly, you may be a high net worth person with a lot of assets, and you need a fine tuning of your financial plan. You want to get it up to date. You want to make sure it's the right plan and that you have the right planner to help you make that plan work. But just as importantly, you need to make sure that you understand it, and I'll bet you that you don't understand your financial plan. And it really struck me because I'm starting to say, what do people that see me come and see me have in common? Well, most of them don't have a financial plan, and the ones that do don't understand it. Don't understand it is extremely important. There's no point in having a financial plan if you don't understand it. Does that make sense? Maybe you want to comment on that. Maybe that's a good reason to give us a call. Let's talk to Colleen from North Vancouver. Colleen, welcome to the program. Hi, how are you? Pretty good, Colleen. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, I'm the one. I'm one of those people that uh, didn't have a very good financial plan. Now I'm broke. So, can you start all over again? I have a book called "Start Late, Finish Rich" by David Bach. My brother, who is in finance, gave it to me. I'm sure that's a pretty good book. I'm not not familiar with that one, but uh, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Fifty-five. You got lots of time. <laughs> and I'm on disability. That's the problem. But I'm trying to I'm trying to cure myself. I have Parkinson's. Okay. And um, I'm thinking that somehow, it's through different ways that I can get better than worse. And um, I can keep working a little bit on the side. So I need to be able to get enough money just to invest a little bit. So what you're trying to do, like, tell me, uh, you know, Colleen, do you own your own house? No. <laughs> okay, you don't own a house. No, uh, I, uh, my you, only assets are my cat. <laughs> <laughs> do you have extra well, space? My can uh, my van. can you that? take in homestay students? No, I, I'm in an apartment. Okay. And I I do have a pet, a pet sitting company. Well, maybe that would be one way that you could make some extra money. Yeah, yeah. You, I, need, I do you, that. you need to find a, you need to find a way that uh, physically uh, that you're capable of of creating extra income. Okay. And, so yeah. uh, I would suggest uh, if you use Google, you can Google home based businesses and find all kinds of them. You have one right now. Maybe you can develop that. Maybe you can develop franchises for that. There's ways to, perhaps to expand on that, but you need to find a way uh, to make more money that's compatible with your physical condition. Yeah. And uh, Google can help you do that. Google is well, a source of ultimate information, really. And I can only work so much because, um, you know, it's very taxing on my body mm -hmm. but if I do work a lot. So I have some good work, some very good clients. Mm-hmm. But um, the fact is, I'd like to say I wish that in school, and I think they do now, have classes for kids to do financial planning. I don't think they do, like not that. effectively. If, if they do, they don't have an effective program to educate people f financially. It doesn't okay. exist, to the best of my knowledge. I, I thought I had heard some kids say that they had... Oh, they, talk, they, they talk about different ways of doing the financial learning situation. 
but I'm talking about financial planning. There should be a subject in school called financial planning. Yeah. Would you Very few people know how to define what that even means. I, when I was working before, I did have a plan with uh, my company. They would invest in my RRSPs. Yeah, that's a group RRSP, but that's, that itself is not a financial plan. That's a not, financial product. It helps. It's yeah, that's one of the of three Ps. You uh -huh. see, you need, you need a box to be able to put all your investments in. That box is called a financial plan. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's a wrapper, if you want to call it that. A financial plan really is a document which is dedicated to listing your financial goals. There's a page in there, or a section in there, where you list your goals. And where? And then the second... In the book that you have? Pardon me? Where, where is this list? Well, I, what you do, if, if you call Frida, I will do a written financial plan for you. Okay? That's, a, that, that's how you get a written financial plan. The book that I'm giving away is called a goals book. It's, uh, it's the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, but it's a workbook. There's yeah. a book called Think and Grow Rich, and then there's a workbook called Think and Grow Rich. I'm talking about the workbook. Okay. The book you can get free. It's a free download. The uh, workbook costs $24 per workbook if you order them online. Okay? okay. And I will send you one because you called the show. Thank you. Okay. And I, I have two in my family that are, one just moved out here. He's a financial mm -hmm. person, mm -hmm. uh, my brother-in-law, and executive, uh, president of a company. And uh, he's trying to get me to do a budget. But the thing is, it's pretty hard to do a budget when you end up in deficit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't, actually. You still got to do it. You got to be able to face up to it. You have to be able to put it down on a piece of paper and look at it every day and say, how do I solve this problem? How do I, find that, how do I find that $300 that I'm short every month? I need to earn an extra $300 a month or I have to cut my expenses by $300 a month. Exactly. That means you may have to sell one of your two cars. It may mean you have to get rid of your dog or your cat. No, it, it, it may mean all kind. It means you eat less. Okay. I do that. I don't have TV now. I don't have internet. I have a smartphone. I've cut so I'll cut back on that. And believe it or not, it's well, great. That, I have TV. And, that, and that's that's what you have to do. Either that, or you have to earn more money somehow. Yeah. So you got to yeah. enhance your babysitting or your. Pussy. Animal sitting or your cat That's sitting fair. business, you have to, you have to expand on that. So start selling franchises. You could you could set up a franchise system called animal sitting, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, and you could sell franchises and teach other people how to do the same thing, like yeah, I do well, here on this show. I teach people about money and how to keep it. Actually, Maybe I should change the name website. of this show to Money and How to Keep It rather than It's Your Money and How to Keep It because Money and How to Keep It is shorter. I like them short. Okay? Money and How to Keep It. Wow. <laughs> I think I'm going to change the name of the show. I like that. Good ring. <laughs> I did a contest one time years ago, and I, I, I was looking for somebody who could find a better name for the show rather than It's Your Money, and nobody won because I couldn't find one. I think I just discovered one. Well, yeah, sure because it's, money and how to keep it. Beautiful. It's a positive thought instead of a negative yeah. thought. Yeah. Right? Money and how to keep it. Not yeah. just how to earn it. May, maybe money and how to earn it and, how, and keep it may uh, even be better. So, but the bottom line is that people fail. They do not succeed in this area. Most people do not achieve financial success. Your hopes, your plans, your dreams, and your ambitions depend upon one thing, and that's the money you need to be able to carry them out and most people will not get there, okay? And, and the reason they don't get there is because you have to be able to articulate what you want to achieve financially. So here's the question, Colleen. You can answer it if you like or you don't have to, but what is the number one thing financially that you want to achieve? Security. What does that mean? Expand on it. Have so that as I'm um, getting older, how do you make security crystal clear? Something that uh, says that I will be not on the street when I'm 80. <laughs> <laughs> How much money do you need to be able to accomplish that? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Okay. Well, let me, let me help you because this is what you need to do. You have to define 
how much income you need per month to make sure that that doesn't happen. Number one. And how do you do that? You need to make a budget that says, this is how much money I'm going to spend on rent, on groceries, on transportation, on presents, and so on. So you have to make a budget. Now, I don't know what the number is going to be, but let's say the number you come up with is $3,000 a month. That's $36,000 a year gross. Now, from that, you have to deduct taxes, so that leaves you about about 2500 a month left to spend. So you can't spend more than 2500 a month or you have a deficit. Okay? Yeah, so so you, have to, you have to start defining that, your income and your expenses. I, and I have been doing those budgets. Okay. But, uh, so, once, uh, so basically you say that right now you have a bit of a deficit. So how are you going to fix that? Okay. You have to be able to visualize it. That's mm-hmm. the thought. So think about what I'm saying. You have to be able to see it. You have to be able to feel it. You have to be able to apply all your senses to this picture of you having already achieved a well-balanced budget. You're not broke on payday. You have money left over. You, 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 you deposit your paycheck in the bank. You, you pay all your expenses, and you've got a surplus left over. Visualize looking at your bank book, and that's what you want to see every month, not just occasionally. Every month you want to have positive cash flow. If you do that, your bank account is going to grow. It's going to continue to grow and get bigger and bigger. And then you're going to have a new problem. You're going to have too much money in the bank. Believe it or not, that's a problem because yeah. it doesn't earn enough money. Yeah. you got to then take some of that money. You leave maybe six months of expenses inside the bank account and take the rest, and you have to invest it in longer-term investments. That's what you have to do. And and I have a brother in the state that's in finances for the Y. It's just- Mm-hmm. So I have some help sometimes, but they're they're so busy and far. He's far away, but it's start. <laughs> well, you got to find yourself a local financial advisor, and if you want one, I'm available. So all you have to do is to initiate a relationship is give Frida a call. You can call Frida right now at the office, area code 604-737-3512, long distance 800-661-1495. Get your financial future going today by making that phone call. Make an appointment, come in and see me. And I emphasize this. There is absolutely no cost, no obligation of any kind whatsoever. Everything to gain, nothing to lose. And because you called the show, we'll make sure that you get the Napoleon Hill workbook uh, based on Think and Grow Rich. You just fill in the blanks and we'll tell you how to get the book itself as as a free download. Fairball? Sounds great. Can I tell you what the name of my website is? If you want. It's sure. It's called Vancouver Helping Paws. Vancouver? Helping Paws. Okay. Very it's good. Like it should be North Vancouver, but when I was making it, I was back east, and I, mm-hmm. I said Vancouver, but it doesn't seem to reflect what it is because I, I really work in, in, okay. in the North Shore. Well, if you call Frida, get get the ball rolling. That's That's the way to do it. That's the way to get started. Remember, the longest journey begins with the first step, and that step is a phone call. Thank you so much. I okay, love you Colleen, so- you enjoy the rest of the weekend. I appreciate the call a lot. And I'll get other people to listen. Okay. Definitely. You take care. You too. Bye. Bye for now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, listeners out there, if you just tuned in, I'm certified financial planner, Fred Snyder, also a registered financial planner, representing Scotia McLeod. My mission, my purpose, my raison d'etre is to teach you what you need to know, to teach you what you need to know to make better financial decisions. Better financial decisions is what it's all about. You need the knowledge to be able to do so, and the quality of the financial decisions you make will largely determine whether you succeed financially or not. And succeeding financially means that you keep a substantial amount of money a substantial percentage of the money that you earn during your lifetime. And most people fail to do that because they don't have the knowledge to be able to do it. They are not motivated enough to do it. And I want to get back into this area of motivation. Uh, And again, I want to kind of keep that focus there. I want to talk a lot about about the strategies and, and the technology involved behind financial planning. But I also want to talk about the motivation because, ladies and gentlemen and listeners, you have to want to. 
You have to be obsessed. You have to have a driving sense of urgency to get it done. You have to have a burning desire, a burning desire. So how do you create burning desire? I saw a commercial this morning on CNN about somebody retiring in Hawaii uh, and somebody waved a magic wand and there was a beach house appeared from nowhere on the beach. And, 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 and the fellow walks out the door of the beach house onto the beach, raises his arms in the air, whips his t-shirt off and the towel off his back, feels the hot sun on his back, the sand crunching between his toes, the waves lapping on the shore and says to himself, my God, was it ever worth it. I put all this money away and had I, had I failed to do that, I would not be enjoying my life right now. But right now, I can look forward to staying here for this month and next month because I know next month there'll be another check and the month after that there'll be another check and the month after that there'll be another check and those checks will keep coming and they will pay the bills and they will allow me to be able to live this lifestyle for as long as I live. And that's what I really want. Now, are you in the same boat? It may not be a beach house in Hawaii. Maybe it's this 600 square foot house at Whistler because you like the winter instead. Or maybe it's a 50 foot yacht. I, I, I say this often and the people who own this particular house may be listening for all I know. But I, I, I spent a lot of time in uh, uh, Fisherman's Cove in West Vancouver. And at the mouth of Fisherman's Cove, there's an island right at the mouth. And there's a house sitting on that island that, God, it must be, I'm guessing, maybe 25,000 square feet. It's huge, one of the biggest houses I've ever seen. It is absolutely beautiful. Tied up at the back door, there are two cabin cruisers that are about 50 feet long. They're probably worth a million each minimum, probably more. Got no idea, but they're absolutely beautiful. Just owning these, th this place and these boats, the cost of owning them, the overhead would be huge, the taxes and everything else. But this person is probably living the life they want to live because they were successful in accumulating a fortune large enough to be able to support living in this kind of a lifestyle, okay? Maybe they inherited the money. Maybe they won Lotto Max or something. Heaven only knows. I don't know. But really, that's what it's all about. So what does the house that you want to live in look like, okay? And I, I say this. Does it look like the one you really want or the one you're prepared to settle for? And the same thing applies to your car and your other worldly possessions. And what kind of a person deserves to have these things? And again, as I said many, many, many times before, having is the result of being. So you must become to have. You gotta educate yourself. And education is a lifelong process. It's not something that has a beginning and an end. Only when you die, maybe it comes to an end. But outside of that, it's life, lifetime. Because as we speak right now, things are changing all around us. The world is changing. The world is evolving. It's like I started out the show by saying, don't pay too much attention to the media. What's new? Nothing has really changed. But maybe that's not true. Maybe it has changed. Maybe it is different right now. The regulatory environment when it comes to investments is different. The amount of world debt is way out of control. Has it ever been that bad in the past? I don't know. Do we have people like Donald Trump having a chance to become the president of the United States as an example? And maybe, maybe Trump would make a great president, okay? Some people would give me a real rough argument on that, but maybe we need somebody that's tough like he is. And is he really tough or is that all bravado, okay? Remember Ronald Reagan when Ronald Reagan was first elected? They released the hostages the same day because they knew he didn't fool around. He said something, he did it. When Carter was in there, they dragged that thing on and on and on and on. Okay. 
So we have a lot to think about when we talk about our future finances. And again, I say that our politicians have a great deal to do with how successful we are financially because the taxes we pay will determine how successful we are financially. Okay? If, if governments are going to continue to increase taxes, if they're going to start taking estates away when we die, okay? I, I remember George McGovern one time was being interviewed on CNN and he told Larry King that if he'd have been elected, he would have taxed estates at 100%, which means if, if you inherited a million dollars from your mother or your dad, you'd have to pay it all, give it all to the government in tax. Think about that and think and say, well, he didn't really say that. I heard him say it. And he further said, the only reason I would do that is because the fact that they have a million dollars to inherit means we didn't tax them enough in the first place. Now, I heard it. If you don't believe it, Google it. It's on the Internet. Okay? So that kind of thinking, ladies and gentlemen, is out there. So wealth is, wealth is the money you've been able to accumulate after you've paid the tax on it. So you, you earn some money, and you pay the government a healthy amount of income tax on it, and then you invest that money in investments in your bank account or stocks or mutual funds or real estate or whatever, and you accumulate that money, and then the government says, well, we want that too. So they get you coming, they get you going, and they get you after you've gone, all right? So I want you to think that taxes becomes a very, very important ingredient in the accumulation of money because the real return after taxes and inflation is what really counts. So ask yourself this question. On my investment portfolio that I have right now, with XYZ Company and John Brown Investment Advisor, on that portfolio, am I getting a positive return after taxes and inflation? And is that return enough to get me to where I want to go financially? This is the way I want to end up, and this is hypothetical. Um, you come and you talk to me, and I say, well, what age do you want to retire? And you say, well, I want to retire at 60. How old are you now? Well, I'm 50. Well, 60 is 10 years from now. So in the next 10 years, what has to happen? Well, 10 years from now, because of inflation, um, instead of me needing $40,000 a year to retire, I'm going to need 50. So you can make a calculation as to what the number is to have the same purchasing power 10 years from now, assuming a certain rate of return. So I'm going to need an income of $50,000 to start 10 years from now. How much do you have today? Well, I have $300,000 accumulated. Well, uh, if my $300,000 accumulates at, say, an assumed rate of 5%, um, will that be enough money to generate the $40,000 or the $50,000 a year that I need inflation adjusted to start 10 years from now? Depends on how long that money has to last. Well, that money has to last as long as I live, and I figure my life expectancy is going to be age 90. So that money has to last for 30 years. So how do I do the calculations? How do I calculate whether that 300000 I already have on its own will be enough to achieve my financial objective? Or if it's not, how much money do I have to add to it every year between now and then? See, it's not as simple as it sounds. You don't say, well, I have $500,000, and uh, if I... Uh, have $500,000 10 years from now, and I get a return of, say, 10%, that's $50,000 a year for the rest of my life, and I maintain my principal of $500,000. It doesn't work that way because you have to take taxation off of the earnings, and you have to adjust the earnings for inflation. And if you do both of those, if the rate of return is 5%, inflation is 3 you end up you're broke in 11 years from the day you retire. You need to know that, and only a proper financial plan will provide you with those numbers. I can do that here right now on my computer. I'm not going to. I just want you to take the time to understand that 90% of the people I talk to haven't got the foggiest idea of what these numbers are all about, and they're part of a financial plan. They don't have the foggiest idea of what these numbers are all about. And they will, if they live a long life, 
and the chances are you will these days with advances in medicine and everything else. You know, I heard the other day that within 10 years they'll be able to use a 3D printer to print an artificial, no, not an artificial, to print a heart out of your own tissue. A new a heart transplant using your own tissue. Unbelievable. They say within 10 years. Today, today they can print an, a, a heart valve for a transplant right now using a 3D printer. Unbelievable. And it's just begun. So maybe the day is coming when we're going to live to be 130. Well, most people I know have planned to be broke at age 90. So that means if they live, if, if they're broke at 90, they're going to be alive for 40 years and be dead broke, depending on the government and state. Government's probably not going to allow that to happen. I don't know how they, how they fix it, but I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> they have people to come around and shoot you because they can't afford to, to support such an aging population. So the, I'm trying to make you think. Are you really taking the time to think about your financial future? Are you taking the time to think about what if I'm alive and broke when I'm age 100 and looking forward to living to be 130 or 140 or whatever it is by that time? And, you know, it, it's okay to have too much, but it's not okay to have too little. So if you, if you over plan and you end up with surpluses, you just leave it to your kids if you die too soon. But if you live long enough, then you're going to need the money. We have to go to the break. We're going to go to the break. And when we come back, we'll continue talking about this very exciting topic. Don't go away. So you got to start thinking about how you're spending your money. Fred Snyder. If you can reduce the amount of tax you pay, that means that you get a be a tax refund. So you get a tax refund means you've really overpaid your taxes. And if you overpay your taxes, what you've really done is loan money to the government. So rule number one of my 46 ways to ease the tax bite is don't lend your money to the government. Fred Snyder. So pay your taxes. We're not talking about not paying your taxes. We're talking about legal ways to reduce the taxes you pay. Not avoid them, to reduce the taxes you pay so that you can have more money to save and invest so that you can achieve your financial goals sooner and if you're already there, stay there longer. Because once you get there, it's your obligation to stay there. Fred Snyder. If you have a financial plan and you're, you're somewhere in the middle and you're wondering what tweaks that you should make in that plan to make it what you really want it to be, time to make a phone call. Or if maybe you're just getting started out and you want to get a starter plan, maybe it's time to talk to somebody like myself and get yourself on the right track. Fred Snyder. I think that everybody needs to go and make an appointment to see Fred. Talk to Fred. Listen to Fred. Fred Snyder. Sunday mornings 9 to 11 on CIL 650. Welcome back to It's Your Money on CIL 650. If you have a question for Fred, call 604-280-0650. Now back to Fred. Okay, we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, remind you once again, uh, we're live and we're here until the top of the hour. And then we have to go and we'll see you the following week once again. But our mission is to teach you what you need to know to make better financial decisions. It's about money and how to keep it. And most of us fail in keeping it. We make enough, but we don't keep enough. And we fail in that area because they didn't teach us in school how to do it. Schooling should teach us reading, writing, arithmetic, and financial planning. Okay? Financial planning should be a topic in school. So if you're a teacher, you want me to come and speak to your class, I'd love to do that anytime. Uh, if you belong to any group or organization, you want me to come and address your organization about how to keep more of your hard-earned money, happy to do that as well. But essentially, it starts with a financial plan. That's what we're talking about. And again, I said earlier, I see financial plans all the time. And my favorite question is this. You have a financial plan. I see it. It looks real nice. Can you explain it to me? And 99% of the time, they haven't got a clue what's in the plan. They don't, they, they don't know what it means. So if you have a financial plan and you don't understand it, it's time to make a phone call. Now, I'm going to give you these numbers. And again, you've got everything to gain. 
nothing to lose by making a phone call. You get a seat at our next workshop. You get a written financial plan at absolutely no cost or obligation. You get Napoleon Hill's fabulous uh, workbook, uh, Rethink and Grow Rich, and I'll show you how to get the book itself. It's a free download. That's a $24 value for the workbook. That's what it actually costs me. And because I'm not getting a 1,000 phone calls asking for that workbook, uh, I can afford to continue to do it. But if I had 10,000 phone calls asking for the workbook, I'd cut that one off pretty fast. Okay. Uh, 604-280-0650. Long distance, 877-280-0650. Free to down at the office, 604-737-3512. Long distance, 1-800-661-1495. You want to log on, it's www.cl650.com. Think of the www as worldwide wealth. That's what we're talking about. So, again, maybe that would be a good name for this show, Worldwide Wealth. Might try that one. Uh, bottom line is we're talking about your money, more importantly about your money, how to keep it, and the reason or the way to do that is to have clearly defined financial goals to be obsessed about money and there's nothing wrong with being obsessed it's the most important job in the world because you say i want to help people the best way to help people is to become rich if you're rich it's easy to help people if you're poor it's pretty hard um you, you know you see somebody sitting on a street corner panhandling i don't think that person is, has the ability to help too many people including themselves that's why they do that so again uh what I want to do right now is talk about uh, this one here. There's a picture of a newborn baby. On average, a newborn baby will live 22,463 days before retirement. So that's how much time a newborn baby would have to achieve financial success. Problem is that newborn baby isn't even going to start on that road until maybe 20 or 25 or 30 or 40 even. So the time gets pretty short, and it's the amount of money that you put away that really counts. It's, it's uh, time and money that makes the goal. It's not the amount. So again, if you want to use the rule of 72, if you can get a return on your money of 12%, your money doubles every six years. Uh, so think about how many chances you have to double your money during your working career. You can do the calculation almost in your head. So once once again, 604-280-0650, long distance, 877-280-0650. Log on, www.cil650.com, print it out the office, 604-737-3512, long distance, 800-661-1495. Just tuned in, I'm certified financial planner, Fred Snyder, also a registered financial planner. We're talking about your money and how to keep it. So what I want to do right now is talk about Ogmandino and the Ten Scrolls. So these are affirmations, ladies and gentlemen, and the first way to motivate yourself to achieve success is to be able to visualize yourself having already achieved the things that you desire. But there's another way as well, and it's called affirmations. These are, these are, th this is how you talk to your subconscious mind. And it's how you program your subconscious mind, which will provide you with the motivation you need. So, this is a book itself called The Greatest Salesman by Ogmandino. Fabulous book. I suggest you get it and read it. But the book talks about 10 scrolls. The first scroll in the book is, Today I Begin a New Life. So you get up in the morning, and the first thing you say to yourself, you go look in the mirror and say, look, let's forget about yesterday. It was not a good day. I went fishing. It was bumpy out there. It was a rough ride. Today is going to be different. Okay? So today I begin a new life. No matter what happened in the past, I'm going to turn the page and start all over again. Does that make sense? Okay? Take... Take the blackboard and erase whatever's on there. Don't dwell on the past, except to learn from it. Look at the now and look at the future. So today I begin a new life. I hope you can relate to that. 
I will greet this day with love in my heart. I want you to think about that. I just get up, it's a new life, and I'm going to love everybody. I'm going to love every moment of this life. I'm going to be enthusiastic about everything that I do, and I'm going to demonstrate to other people that I am enthusiastic and I believe in what I do. Who else could ever have a job like I have? where I can teach people what they need to know to make better financial decisions so that I can motivate people to make those financial decisions and help them achieve financial success. Zig Ziglar has said many, many, many times that you can have anything in this life you want if you only help enough other people get what they want first. I want you to really think about that. I will greet this day with love in my heart. I hope that makes sense. And see how this renews you. I went to a workshop one time, and it talked about this guy who was cutting wood. And every day, he was producing less and less when it came to cutting wood. And he asked somebody, he said, I don't know what's going on, but somehow or another, I'm just not producing enough. And the guy said, have you sharpened your axe lately? Well, that's what we're talking about here, ladies and gentlemen. Have you sharpened your axe lately? We're talking about success. I want you to visualize the word success. Capital S, U, C, C, E, S, S. Now I want you to put the small s's, put a line through them. That stands for small dollars. I want you to take the two c's and put a line through them. That stands for small cents. And then you've got the capital S at the front, put two lines through it, and that stands for capital dollars. There's only two letters left. What are they? U and E. The U stands for U, and the E stands for effort. So if you want capital dollars, like in the capital S, or you're prepared to settle for small cents or small dollars, it really depends on you and the effort that you put into it. That's what we're talking about. So I will greet this day with love in my heart and I will be thankful for my role in life. I will persist until I succeed. I know a financial advisor whose license plate says never quit. I dare say he probably read this book. Okay. In Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, it's in there as well. Many stories about people who never I could spend the next half an hour. I'm not going to do that. It's enough to say, never quit. Never give up. You may be just inches from success and you give up. You throw in the towel. You never quit. You establish goals. You, you start making progress towards those goals. You maintain that effort and you become obsessed with success and you will succeed without any doubt. I will persist until I succeed. I will never give up. Driving sense of urgency to get things done. Get her done. I am nature's greatest miracle. Now, I'm not saying this in an egotistical way, but I am. There's nobody else like me. There isn't another soul in this world that's exactly like me. There's some people that might look like me, but they're still greatly different than me. They think differently in all kinds of ways. So I personally am nature's greatest miracle, and so are you. I want you to think about that. Generally, people only use 5 to 10% of their brains. you got 90% left. You want to beat out other people? Work harder. Work smarter, work longer. It's a competitive world, so you want to beat your competition? Get up at four in the morning. You'll find time to do work that nobody else will ever take the time to do because they're too lazy. I get up every morning at four. That gives me two, three hours every day before the day starts to do all kinds of things. I am nature's greatest miracle. Think about that. I will live this day as if it is my last. Supposing you went to the doctor and the doctor said, you know, tomorrow you're going to die. 
What would you do? How would you live that day? Would you talk to all your loved ones? Think about that for a minute. If today was the, your last day on this earth, how would you live it? That means you motivate yourself. Remember, you're looking in the mirror and you're saying over and over and over again, I'm going to live this day as if it was my last. Make sure nobody's watching. Okay? Make sure nobody can hear you. But the bottom line is, this is you programming your subconscious mind. And once those thoughts are in there, you are controlled, whether you believe it or not, by your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is a fertile garden. And if you decide to plant weeds in there, that's what it's going to produce. So you put the good thoughts in there. Someone once said, form good habits and become their slave. Not the opposite. Form bad habits and become their slave, which is what many people do. They form bad habits. They smoke. Think about how stupid smoke is. It's the most stupid thing you can possibly do when you think about it. How much does it cost to smoke? About 10 bucks a day? But you've got to earn $20, pay about $10 tax to have $10 left to buy the cigarettes. So that's really $20 a day. That's five to $600 a month to slowly kill yourself. Doesn't make much sense to me at all. You'd be better off to buy lottery tickets with the money. Okay? But why do people smoke? Good habit is just difficult to break as a bad one. They've formed the habit of smoking. It's, it's, it's hard. I, I used to smoke many years ago. But I quit. And the only, only way I was able to quit is just make up my mind to quit. So I will live this day as if it is my last. What would you do if this was your last day on earth? I will master my emotions. Now, I have a short fuse. I have a temper. I'll admit to it. But I will say one thing. If I lose my temper, I lose it deliberately. I am the master of my emotions. I will not allow my emotions to govern myself. So you've got to do this. You cannot get through life. You cannot achieve the success that you want to achieve unless and until you can manage your emotions. Which means you curb your ability or your desire, I should say, to retaliate. Someone says something to you or about you that you don't like, you curb your desire to retaliate. If retaliation is necessary, well, then do so. But if you do so, it's by choice. Think about that for a few minutes. I will master my emotions. I will laugh at the world. You know, my wife the other day, we have a, we have a funny story. I was in uh, Cancun a number of years ago, and we went on these... Uh, Sadhus on this tour and uh, my wife was saying when we were coming into the docks be, be careful how you're docking I said oh, don't worry I do this all the time at home do this all the time at home and she's well be careful and when I hit the dock I bumped the dock a little bit and I went to move my foot to get my balance I didn't realize that my foot was in a stationary position between the outside and the body of the thing I couldn't move my foot to gain, gain my balance and I fell in the ocean. And we still laugh about this every day. And she said, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been funny had you not said, I do this all the time. <laughs> and it's a true story. And that's okay. You gotta be able to laugh at yourself. So what have you done that is absolutely ridiculous? I've done lots of things. I could tell you a dozen different stories of things like that. And I get a kick out of that. I will laugh at the world. I will not ever take myself too seriously. I'll laugh at the world and I'll laugh at myself. This is why the comedians are so popular when, when, when you think about it. I will multiply my value a hundredfold. Now I want you to think for a minute. You're a very successful person. 
And how can you multiply your value a hundredfold? You know, we talked to a lady earlier on the show who said that she had an animal sitting business. I think she said that she she sat uh, cats, okay? Well, how can she multiply her value a hundredfold? Well, she could do that by creating a bigger and bigger cat setting business. She could sell franchises. She could develop her business in such a way that she can teach other people how to do the same thing, other people who need to make more money. You have, you have Google. Napoleon Hill, in his book, Think and Grow Rich, talks about the mastermind. And he talks about Henry Ford, who only had six years of public school. And he was ridiculed for his lack of education to the point where he sued a paper. And they went to court. And in court, he was cross-examined by the people or the lawyers who represented the paper, the newspaper. I think it was the Chicago Tribune. But they said to him, Mr. Ford, we want to ask you about various people. And they ask him all kinds of questions regarding historical information. Who was this guy? Who was that guy? And so on. Questions are irrelevant at this particular point. But Ford, after taking some of this for a while, stood up and he said, look, gentlemen, he said, you are asking me why I need all this useless knowledge inside my head when I have access to the information anyway. And they said, what in the world do you mean? And Ford said, well, on my desk, I have 15 buttons. And the first button says accountant. So if I need accounting advice, I push the button, and in comes my accountant, and I ask him the questions I need answers to. There's another one on there that says legal. I push that button, my lawyer comes in, I ask him all the questions I need, and so on. So yeah, I think you get the drift. Of 15 buttons, 15 different areas in his life. I just push these buttons and I get all the information I need. Why should I carry that crap around in my head? Okay. One time Henry Ford said, I need to develop a V8 engine. He pushed the button calling the engineers in. The engineers come in and they said, you can't do it. It's impossible. It'll never work. Tell that to the car manufacturers today. So anyway, they said it won't work. He said, I want it done. You have a year to get it done. A year later, they come in. They said, you can't do it. It won't work. He said, I want it done. Go back and keep trying. To make a long story short, eventually they come back with a working model of a V8 engine. So he wouldn't give up. That's an example of not giving up and multiplying your value a hundredfold. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. You don't need 15 buttons on your desk today. You need a laptop computer like the one I have sitting in front of me, or you need an iPhone device like the one I have in my hand here, and you need Google. You go into Google, you get a search box, you type in whatever you wanna know in the search box, and you will get all the information that you ever wanted on just about any topic that you can imagine without getting out of your seat, without having to wait for somebody to pop up to answer your questions when they may not even be available. Napoleon Hill refers to the 15 buttons as the mastermind. Google today is your mastermind. So if you don't have computer skills, you owe it to yourself to get them. Number to call, area code 604-280-0650, long distance, 877-280-0650. Log on, www.cil650.com, free to down at the office, area code 604-737-3512, long distance, 1-800-661-1495. So the scroll marked 8, today I will multiply my value 100-fold, and to summarize, I basically said, Use Google. Don't worry so much about the mastermind. You want to multiply your value a hundredfold. Read the book, Think and Grow Rich. Get the workbook by making the phone call. Uh, it's free, and that is one way that you can multiply your value a hundredfold. The scroll marked nine. I will act now. Not tomorrow. Now. The power of now. Get her done. Remember, talking about it isn't doing it. 
Thinking about it isn't doing it. Planning it isn't doing it. Only doing it is doing it. Do it now. Quit procrastinating. Those who succeed act now. That's what we're talking about. And we have one more. I will pray for guidance. I won't ask my higher power for anything except guidance. I won't say, please give it to me. I'll say, help me find it. Show me how to achieve it, whatever it might be. That's what I will pray for. Nothing more, nothing less. You don't get something for nothing. I don't expect something for nothing. The price I pay is the time it takes me to do it. And to quote a famous Larry the Cable Guy, get her done. I think those are really good words, get her done. Driving sense of urgency to get things done, do not procrastinate. Let's talk to Maria from Vancouver. Maria, welcome to the program. How are you doing? Pretty good, Marie. How are you? I'm doing good. I've been listening to you as usual. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking there's one word you haven't used this morning that I feel is very important in life. Because without it, we just never go forward. We just stay where we are and we go backwards, but we don't take a step forward. And that word would be determination. You need determination every time you're going to do something that you're scared to do. And you have to take that first step and see where it takes you. It usually takes you to a better place. It's that fear that keeps you back. No question. Burning desire. Uh, You need to be determined. Never give up. Yes. Never give up. And even, and even when you hit bottom, you've got to get yourself up because nobody else can do it for you. You've got to do it. That's correct. And every day after that gets a little bit better. I speak from my own experience. I went from a lot of money to no money, and I did it all by myself. Why? Because I didn't have that financial plan. And without that financial plan, if I was able to fail, I can guarantee other people out there will fail, and that's why so many will end up on we know where they end up they end up at the bottom with nothing when they each reach age 65 well the statistics aren't in their favor they're really not yeah so like i say fred you keep up the good work the people are listening and like you say there's thousands of people out there a lot of them are quiet learners they just they just do it quietly but as long as they take that first step whether they go to you or somebody else then the world is in a better place Maria, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the call, and th- those are really, really thoughtful words. Thank you, you ta- and uh, you t- we will probably see you again next week. Okay, you take care and have a nice weekend. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye Bye-bye. for now. Okay, Maria's line is now open, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we're coming up to the break in a few minutes. But the bottom line is, get on the line. Give us a call. Get the workbook. It's free. There's no cost. There's no obligation. Participate in the show. That's what this show is all about. Maybe you think you don't need the principles that we're talking about, but maybe somebody else does. Maybe somebody else would like to hear your version of what needs to be done. Maybe you want to make a contribution to the show. Get on the line and give us a call. Remember, once again, we're talking about money and how to keep it. Money and how to keep it has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Let's talk to Elizabeth from Maple Ridge. Elizabeth, welcome to the program. Yeah, I, I just need to order the book. <laughs> and I phoned the other number. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just phoned, you just phoned the uh, phone Frida down at the office at 604. Yeah, and then she said I was to call this other number. Well, you got to call the show. you got to make a contribution to the show. I'm not oh. going to tell everybody just to call Frida. I'll be giving out a truckload of books. Oh, I thought the books were for free. Well, the, well, the, the, the part, you have to make a contribution to the show. I see. Okay, so, thanks. So that's the, only, that's the only cost. So what's your contribution to the show? Do you have a question or a comment? Hello? Okay, Elizabeth, we'll send you the book anyway, okay? That's the bottom line. So, you know, you're out there. You're listening to the show. I want you to call. I want, if, if you're an existing client and you have a comment that you want to make or a question, or you're considering becoming a client, or you're dealing with another financial advisor and you have a question or a comment, give us a call. Because 
we want you to share your knowledge with ourselves on this show and our listeners. That's what this is all about. So it's 604 280 long distance 877 280 com. free to down at the office at 604-737-3512, long distance 800-661-1495. And let me make one thing very, very clear right now. You have to make a contribution to the show. It's not financial, so when I say free, uh, we're not asking for money in any way, shape, or form. But we do want you to make a contribution to the show. Get on the line give us a call. Remember, once again, we're talking about your money and how to keep it. Your money and how to keep it. So we'll come back right after the break, so don't go away. I want you to imagine a person who is uptight, always worried, has high blood pressure, looking at their bank statement every time they turn around and it's always red, okay? They're spending more than they earn. They can't seem to get out of the hole. They're always telling people, I'm catching up, I'm trying to catch up. So they're always behind the eight ball. And life isn't pretty. And they're not happy and they're frustrated. And they're not even fun to be around those kind of people. There's a black cloud hanging over their head. Visualize that, because there's lots of people out there right now that are in that boat. Fred Snyder. And you have to ask yourself the question right now, what would happen if that happened to me? Because here I am, I'm sitting out here, I don't have a written financial plan. I haven't taken the time to sit down and think about my goals, the things that I really want to accomplish. I'm like a ship without a rudder. I, 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 I have no direction. I'm procrastinating because I don't know what to do. And I'm still not doing anything about it. So instead of being proactive as I should be, I'm being reactive. I'm waiting for the bad stuff to happen and not controlling my destiny. If that's you, it's time to make a phone call. Call Fred. Talk to Fred. Listen to Fred. Fred Snyder. Sunday mornings 9 to 11 on Sea Isle 650. This is CISL Vancouver. Smooth and easy. Sea Isle 650. You're listening to It's Your Money on CL 650. Once again, here is Fred Snyder. Okay, we're back. We're live. Interactive, taking your calls. Again, all people, all callers who call the show get the workbook from Think and Grow Rich entitled, well, it's really a workbook. You fill in the blanks. We'll also show you how to get a copy of the book itself because that's a free download. So you can get that by way of Google or any internet connection. Let's talk to Biddy from North Vancouver. Biddy, welcome to the program. Oh, hi, Fred. Hi, um, Biddy. I'm at the moment on track with uh, Steve. However, I'm in the middle of changing direction a little bit with my career. And I think that this work could be just perfect for me right now to get on a different track and perhaps improve my financial plan a little bit. So your question is? Well, uh, I want the book, right? Okay. The workbook, because I'm changing direction, same career, but in a little bit of a different area. And it's going to be a, a bit of an upheaval with my finances and all that. I want to keep on track where I am, perhaps improve that a little bit, and um, go forward from there. And, of course, any change can always be a little bit um and you're dealing with my son, uh, Steve, right now? Oh, yeah. Okay. And you're happy? Oh, very happy with Steve. And I listen to you every week. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good son. Oh, he's a very good son, and he's taken care of me. I, I first wrote to you many years ago and um, didn't have any money, and you put me on to Steve, and he's been there. Absolute rock for me in my finances. I'll never be very rich, but I'm a lot richer than I was if I hadn't been with you. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, a, some plan is better than no plan. Yes. No, if, if you don't have a plan, you're planning to fail. And I don't know anybody that deliberately plans to fail. So if you want to do better financially, you need a plan. And yeah, I'm happy, to, plan, I'm happy to know that you're on course. I'm, I'm going into being employed by a company as imp- opposed to self-employment, which has been a bit rocky the last couple of years. 
Oh, yeah. And so I need to redirect my own plan in that way, you know, so that I can actually get ahead now. Okay. Uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your call, and thanks for your contribution to the show, and we'll make sure you get the workbook. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, uh, Biddy. Have, enjoy Bye-bye. the rest of the weekend. So Biddy's line is now open. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned in, I'm certified financial planner Fred Snyder, also a registered financial planner representing Scotia McLeod. My purpose or my mission is to teach you what you need to know to make better financial decisions. You, you can't make good financial decisions if you lack the knowledge. I used to work for a company that used to say, we are surrounded by people who have lack of knowledge, limited vision, and entrenched habits, and that's why they fail financially. So I want you to think about that. Lack of knowledge, that's a good reason to fail financially. It probably is. Because most of the people I talk to, almost 99% of them tell me that their knowledge is low. When I say, what's your level of knowledge? Is it high, moderate, or low? They always say low, just about all the time. Sometimes nobody ever says high. So that means my level of knowledge is insufficient to make good financial decisions. That's most people. So think about that. For just a minute, let that sink in. Knowledge is not good on the priority list. Lack of knowledge is not good on the pri- is what I should have said on the priority list. So lack of knowledge, limited vision. What does limited vision mean? Well, I I can't see my goals. I can't see my goals. Maybe I don't even have any. But I can't see my goals means my goals aren't crystal clear enough. I want to I want to be rich. What the heck does being rich mean? Being rich means I have more than enough income to pay my lifestyle expenses and I don't have to work for that money until the day I die. That's rich. That's financial independence. That's where it starts anyway. Lack of knowledge, limited vision, no goals. Entrenched habits. The habit of procrastination. I won't do it now because I can do it tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, well, I won't do it today. I can do it tomorrow. I'm going to just keep on procrastinating. I'm going to do it until I get around to it. I used to, many years ago, as a joke, I used to have circular calling cards. And on on one side, I have my name, address, and phone number. On the back, I said, round to it. So someone said, well, I'll start a plan when I get around to it. And I said, well, here's a round to it. So let's get the plan going right now. Uh, makes sense, but too many people say, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it after the baby's born. I'm gonna start my plan when I get my next raise in pay. I'm gonna do it when I get out of debt. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it someday." Okay, doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen. Procrastination does not work. You have to do it now. Entrenched habits, the habit of procrastination, the habit of spending more than you earn, the habit of not shopping around for investments, the habit of not having a financial plan. Make a list of your bad habits and make a determination to solve them today, not tomorrow, today. That's what you need to do. Let's talk to Helen from Richmond. Helen, welcome to the program. Hi, Fred. Good morning. Good morning, Helen. How are you? I'm good. I had you review my financial plan, and you were kind enough to phone my planner and make some some suggestions to him to improve it. Now, you're the only guy I know that would do that. So thank you very much. Well, there you go. And and did you get all that done? I did, yeah. And um, I'm still trying to get you into Pioneers to talk to us because... I think some of the people there could use your help. Well, most people, almost anybody, can use my help. Even if they think they're okay now, it's time to get a second opinion. Well, Make sure right. you're okay. You know, you the best know thing you, you the best know. thing you can ever do, you go to the doctor for a physical checkup, and the doctor tells you that your health is 110%. Boy, you walk out feeling like a million Okay? Yet many people won't go to the doctor because they're afraid the doctor's going to say there's something wrong with them. So they'll well, ignore it. Two so, opinions are good in my book. Yeah, so, so they are suffering from fear. And fear is the acronym for false evidence appearing real. 
So what's the opposite of fear? Is knowledge. The more you know, the less you're afraid. The less you know, the more you're afraid. That's so right. knowledge is the foundation that dispels fear. And again, and it's covered, it's covered in the book, too. Think and Grow Rich, in great detail. Yeah. So you had a comment? Further comment? Well, I just said happy boating to you because I know that you enjoy that, and now's the time to do it. You're right on. Okay. Okay, Helen, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your call. Yeah, thanks, You, you take care. Bye now. Okay, bye-bye. Helen's line is now open, so ladies and gentlemen, if you just joined us, we're gone in less than 20 minutes, so... You have 20 minutes to get your future going today. This is your chance. Again, a phone call, 604-280-0650. Long distance, 1-877-280-0650. Log on, www.cil650.com. Frida down at the office at 604-737-3512. Long distance, 1-800-661-1495. We're talking about money and how to keep it. The name of the show is It's Your Money and How to Keep It. And how to keep it is the most important part of that because that's where we fail. We earn it, but we don't keep it. So how do we make money? We work for it. Or we have money working for us. Money working for us is all about investments. Working for money is all about labor. There's effort, there's effort required. So you have active and passive income. Passive is money from your investments. Active means that you exert some effort. So again, the more income you have, the better. The more income streams you have, the better. That's what financial success is all about. It's about creating various streams of income. Let's talk to Dixon from Surrey. Dixon, welcome to the program. Hi, um, hi Dixon. Hi, hi, how are you? Great, great. Uh, I just want to ask a question. Um, you know, with the CPP, um, you're allowed to collect CPP while you're working. Yes. At age 60, um, do you recommend um, to take it at 60 or wait till 65? Well, if you could tell me when you're going to die, I could answer the question. Um, yeah. Oh, I did some sur um, like uh, surveys and stuff like that, mm. and uh, going to die at eight, around 88. Well, that's sure, but that's on average. That doesn't mean you're going to die at 88. <laughs> that's the problem you see yeah. look i i recommend that you should take it as early as possible yeah. because then you're going to get it for longer yeah the day you're going to die is predestined we don't know when that is but you're going to get it between now and the day you, you die if you take it at 60 you're obviously going to get it longer than if you wait until you're 65 so yeah. if you take it at 60 um uh, it, let, let's say you decide to take it at 65 and you die when you're 64 yeah, that's, you don't get nothing. Yeah, that's correct. So, <laughs> so you have to, you have to weigh that. Yeah. Now, the, the the odds are, you're probably better off to wait till sixty five because you're probably going to live to eighty five, ninety, today, maybe even longer. So you're going to get more income, but for a shorter period of time. If you take it earlier, you're going to get less income, but for a longer period of time. If, 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 if you do the mathematics, it's called the net present value of money. If you draw, an, assuming a certain rate of return or discount rate, as they call it, if you, you can do a calculation that will say that if you get uh, 20 payments of X dollars, the capital required to fund that is X. And if you get it for, say, 25 years, the capital required then is Y, and you can compare the two. So there's a way to do the mathematical calculation, but they're almost roughly the same if you, if you figure it out. Yeah, but um, the whole the whole, the whole the whole thing really depends on your income needs. If you want to retire at sixty, you may need the income that the CPP will generate, yeah. uh, which which helps you make the decision. Yeah, um, actually, I was thinking I'm I'm still going to work at sixty and keep on working, and the money that I get from the CPP, I might take it out early. I invest that money and make it grow. Sure, put it in, in put it into your TFSA as an example. Yeah. Use it to fund your you, you know what what people need to do is is increase cash flow. So some of the ways that you can increase cash flow, one way is to decrease taxes. Find a way yeah. to decrease taxes, make RRSP contributions, invest in a TFSA, defer property taxes. There are various ways that you can use to improve cash flow. 
Yeah. Uh, they, they make sure that the investments, make sure you get dividends instead of interest, make sure you get capital gains instead of interest, find ways to do that, find ways to mitigate the clawback of the old age pension, as an example, if that comes into play, or the guaranteed income supplement, if that should come into play. So you got to generate, you, you got to work on balancing cash flow, and you got to look at your income statement line by line, and you got to look at your expenditures line by line. And you say, how can I improve? How can I increase my income, decrease my expenditures legally? Uh, is there a way to do that? That's what you have to do. And that's what a good, solid financial advisor will do, be able to look at all those alternatives and help you weigh them so that you can make the right decision. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, you. You actually confirm my, my, my thoughts. <laughs> okay. Well, Dixon, I'll make sure that you get a copy of that uh, workbook as well, and I appreciate the call. Okay, thank you, Fred. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, Dixon's line, Dixon from Surrey, that line is now open. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, listeners out there, make a phone call. You get that uh, free workbook. Good thing to have. Everybody needs it. Let's talk to Mavis from Vancouver. Mavis, welcome to the program. Good morning, uh, Fred. Good morning, Mavis. How are you? Good, thank you. And you? I'm pretty good. Um, top, of the, how, t- top of the morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> how can one pay less tax? Because if one have high income, because if there well, the higher your out, income, the harder it is to pay less tax. That's yeah. that's one of the problems. But there's, you see, I just I just gave you a kind of a menu list of ways to reduce taxes. Is there a way to legally reduce the clawback on your old age pension, as an example? Not not your old yeah the clawback on your old age pension, the clawback on your guaranteed income supplement. Is there a way to convert, without taking additional risk, to convert interest income to dividend income or capital gain income? Is there a way to defer taxes? Have you maxed out on your TFSA? Okay. Uh, These are just some of the ways. Uh, There are certain investments like flow-through shares, which give you incredible tax deductions, but because they're based on resources and because there's a lockup of capital, some people are, are not prepared or able to to deal with the risk involved in those kind of investments. But there's lots of ways to do it. Uh, Again, uh, a lot of it involves income exposure control. You have income you can control when you expose that income to taxes, such as tax deferral in RRSP, should you expose it today or tomorrow. These are things to consider. Uh, There's ways to report interest income that can reduce taxes as well. You need to sit down with somebody that's knowledgeable about all of these areas and kind of be able to define all the options so that you can choose the option which is most suitable for you. Mm-hmm. Because if you're once running out the roof, you know, that's, that's a problem. Well, that's is sure, that, of course. You know, you, you know the old saying, and <laughs> I, I, I don't like cliches, but there's the cliche that that uh, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. That's, that's the price you have to pay. Sometimes to get the tax savings you're looking for, there's a cost involved, and the cost is called risk. And you may not be able or, or, or you may not desire to be able to take that risk that's inherent in those kinds of solutions. And that's fine and that's understandable. But it's, it's incumbent upon any financial advisor to weigh that risk and make you aware of it and help you make the right choice of, of the various investments that are out there that match your situation. And th- this is why we say on this show all the time that it's time for a second opinion. You need to come in. You, Mavis, do you have a financial plan right now? Uh, my personal is, sort of. Do you have a financial plan right now? Sort of. Sort of. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, then, uh, sort of, I'm not sure whether you have one or not. But here's the next question is, do you understand it? Uh, I know sort of where I am sort of standing, and I find, you know, like Mm. the taxes is going up, food Mm. is going up, inflation, and the interest rate is down. So it put a lot of people into a big problem. But you see, you don't, I don't get the impression that you have a proper financial plan by your answer. And I don't get the impression that you understand it well enough. And I guess the key is well enough. The, 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 the bottom line is that you need a financial plan and you need to understand it. You need to take the time to make sure that you get that step right because that's the most important step in the whole process. 
Remember I said earlier the three P's, the plan, the planning, and the products. So number one, you have a kind of a fuzzy plan. You're not sure it's the right plan. And there's lots of people just like you that are listening to the show right now. You're not sure it's the right plan. You're not sure you understand it. Uh, I don't know if you have a financial advisor or not. Uh, if you don't, then you, you need one, and you should pick one that you can talk to and that you trust and that has the ability to be able to give you the answers that you need. And last but not least, you have to make sure, Mavis, that you have the number one best products inside your financial plan. Okay? Now, I have a piece of software right now called Morningstar Advisor Workstation, which I use. And I will tell you right now that I know very, very, very few advisors that understand how to use it. Okay. And, Morning star. And, 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 I, and, and I would not even attempt to operate without it. For example, for example, uh, I am culling right now. I am getting rid of, wherever possible, exposure to resources, or not, not resources, exposure to oil, energy in my portfolios. Okay. Now, I, there's certain funds out there that have a certain amount of money in energy. For example, one of my favorite funds, almost 30% of the fund is in energy. I want that out of my portfolio. I want that fund out. I have a way to look at all the funds available and sort them as to energy exposure from the most to the least. I can tell you the fund out of 22,000 funds that has the least exposure to energy and the one that has the most. And energy is not performing. You know what's happening to the price of oil right now. It's plummeting. It's falling like a stone. Okay? And they, they're actually talking the other day, I heard it on the news somewhere, about the price of oil going down to like $25 a barrel. Now, that's a disaster for the Canadian economy because the Canadian economy itself is 30% energy. Okay? That's why the Canadian dollar is so low right now. And uh, Russia, I think 90% of Russia's economy is energy. And it costs, it costs uh, $67 approximately to get a barrel of oil out of the ground from the tar sands. $67. We can sell it for about 40, 42, 40, somewhere around there right now. Saudi Arabia, it's $17 to get a barrel of oil out of the ground. That they can, they can, they can produce oil at a profit. Well, we produce oil, if we dare, at a loss. Hence, we lay off people right, left, and center that are in the oil industry, and our whole economy suffers, and that's what's, that's what's going on right now. The United States is not so dependent on energy as we are. We're much more so. So the bottom line is that we need to find a way to deal with portfolios and we need to find a way to be able to track the information that we need to make those decisions. So when I say to you, you don't want investments which have a high exposure to energy, I mean that. Okay? The best, the best fund in the country a year and a half ago was averaging 22% compounded annually with about 30% of the fund in energy. And because of energy prices right now, it's down to about 10% compounded annually over the last five years. Last year, there was a loss of about 13% on that particular fund. And it's simply because of energy. So how do, you, how do you manage your portfolio so that you can get around that stuff? You can't do it manually. There's nobody in my business that has the time. You need to be able to Use the software, understand the software that can help you make those decisions in real time. That's what we're talking about. Okay. So, Mavis, I hope that answers your questions. That was a long answer or long response. Okay, thank you. Appreciate your call. Make sure you get the workbook. Take thank care. You. Okay, okay, so uh, we're down to about six minutes on the show, which leaves us about uh, four before we have to go. So, again, I remind you, you're listening to Money and How to Keep It. I'm personal. Uh, financial planner Fred Snyder, also a registered financial planner representing Scotia McLeod. We're talking about your money and how to keep it. That's the bottom line. And the way you're going to do that is to have a proper written financial plan. 
And if you have one, and you probably don't, but if you have one, you need to understand it. And to understand it, you need a proper coach. Maybe not the one that generated the plan in the first place because the plan was too complicated to begin with. Because most of the financial plans I look at, I ask the client, I said, look, this is great, beautiful financial plan you have here, but do you understand it? And they always say, no. Well, then, what's it do for you? Don't know. Okay? So if you're going to get yourself an effective financial plan, you need to understand it, and you need a financial advisor or a financial coach to help you understand it, to be able to point out how it works and what it's supposed to do. So when we talk about financial plans, I'll pull it up there. There's an example of a financial plan inside. You have life insurance, you have savings, and so on. And again, I have the financial planning process listed, and we can blow that one up, I think, on the screen. Uh, we have education, number one, goals. Number two, evaluation of where you stand right now, cash management, risk management, debt reduction, retirement planning, capital creation, estate planning, and the review process. Ten steps, each one vitally important to your financial success. So what you do is visualize yourself with a three-ring binder, and in that binder you have ten sections dedicated to each of those topics, education, goals, evaluation, cash, risk, debt, retirement, capital, estate, and review process. So everything is spelled out in there. So number two step is your financial goals. That's a list of all your financial goals. You want a bigger house. You want a better car. You want a second residence in a warm client. Climate, I should say. Or maybe you want something at Whistler. Or maybe you like to fish and you want yourself a nice 50-foot cruiser. Just imagine that, okay? I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever you can vividly imagine, ardently desire and enthusiastically act upon, whatever it might be, if you believe you can achieve these things, it will inevitably come to pass if you generate a plan. That's what we're talking about. I can help you do that. And once again, to arrange an interview with myself to be able to deal with that particular issue, give Frida a call, 604-737-3512. That's 604-737-3512. Long distance, 1-800-661-1495. I believe I'm in Nanaimo next week, so if you're over on the island you want to see me, again, give Frida a call and make arrangements. Be happy to see you at the Coast Bastion. Uh, I'd once again like to thank our listeners for participating in the show today. It's a long two hours when you have to do it solo like this, but uh, it's kind of fun. So uh, I'm going to leave you for now, and we'll see you same time, same station next week. Bye for now. If you'd like Fred to review your portfolio, call his office right now at 604-737-3512. That's 604-737-3512. Thank you.